Hello folks, this is Chris, KY4CKP, and today on El Cara Ham Radio, we're going to go over some of the uh, recent changes in uh, maintenance and upgrades we've made to our D-Star repeater at our main repeater site. So that's what's coming up next on El Cara Ham Radio. Well, folks, you know it's that time of year, and we had our recent work day at our main repeater site, and, uh, of course, the yard crew came with us, and uh, if you have an outdoor repeater site, some form of, uh, of local maintenance is always necessary, lawn mowing, weed eating, spraying for, uh, you know, for weeds, uh, and watch out for ticks. I know uh, on our little tiny patch here at the top of this hill, I think we run about 10,000 head of uh, ticks, so uh, watch out for those little buggers. But, uh, you know, it's just part of maintaining your sites, and we've been showing this off and on, uh, and it's just part of things. So we really appreciate the, uh, the yard crew, maintenance crew being up there with us. All right, so on this repeater workday, a big part of what we were doing, other than the, uh, the yard maintenance, which is something that almost always needs, needs working on, uh, maybe in the depth of winter it doesn't, but is we were going to do some work with our D-Star repeater that we had put in place. Uh, and a, f a few things uh, sort of have happened or changed or needed to happen or change. Uh, we have internet access, which we didn't have originally when this went in, which has been a big boost uh, to allow us to work with that more fully. Uh, but we had noticed with the D-Star uh, repeater that some other local hams had built for us, and they've done a wonderful job and helped supply these units uh, in our region of Kentucky. Uh, but we noticed our radios, you know, these are older radios, and we noticed they had drifted some, and they weren't, uh, weren't quite properly on frequency. And so we needed to pull the unit out, which we did one day, uh, KY4BDP, uh, Brian did, and we uh, took it uh, to a, another one of our members, uh, and uh, he knew a radio shop, and he was able to, uh, <laughs> to sneak our unit in the back door and get them to... Uh, to tune the radios back properly on, on frequency, which is uh, a huge help for us. So we got that work done. We got it back, uh, put it in the hands of, uh, again, one of our hams, um, KY4DAG, Austin, and uh, he did some other work on this. He took the MMDVM and he put it in this custom printed 3D case. Uh, I think he got the design probably off Thingiverse and uh, did a few other little things. He, uh, he you know, he's built a custom cable uh, to, to take the D-Sub 9-pin serial uh, over uh, and connect that to the, uh, the repeater hat on the MMDVM. He also uh, kind of put together a little 12-volt USB micro adapter to power the, uh, the Raspberry Pi. And, of course, all this kind of work at, at his uh, home QTH was done using a dummy load to make sure we weren't causing any problems uh, anywhere or on any, you know, any repeaters or anything until we were actually ready to do proper official uh, transmissions and things. Uh, so we got all that work done and we got the unit back. And so today was the day on this, this work day where we wanted to reinstall the repeater up at our main, uh, our main repeater shack location. Now there was one other thing we, we wanted to do at this time. We have a, um, you know, an APRS unit up there and we had this D star. Well, we decided to change which of the antennas they were using. The APRS happened to be on, on a taller antenna that was very near the top of our tower. We have a 100-foot tower on a pretty good uh, little, little, little mountain, little knob, uh, as we like to call them here in Kentucky. But we decided to move the D-Star up to that higher antenna, give it a little bit more reach, and, and move the APRS down to a little bit lower antenna. Uh, we uh, like to provide APRS functionality in the region and used to do so many years ago. And we've got that back in recently. We had a video on that. Uh, but we decided to, to flip those antennas. We just felt like the greater reach was probably more beneficial to anybody who might like to use D-Star. And in our region of Kentucky, South Central Kentucky, uh, D-Star is, is one of, if not the most popular, digital forms of radio there are. Now, we have... Yesu repeaters, so we of course have System Fusion and things. Uh, we're also looking 
probably eventually to put in some DMR and other things, uh, and hopefully even tie all those together in a special project, which uh, hopefully will come up later this year. We'll see. So that was a big part of what we were going to do at this work day. So in the next section, let's kind of jump into that work, and we'll talk about that a little bit. So we're going to bring you folks right back. All right, folks, so here we are in the shack, and we're just going to uh, kind of go over uh, uh, reinstalling the, the D-Star unit, uh, kind of switching it over to the, uh, the higher antenna on our, uh, on our tower, uh, switching it with our APRS unit. Uh, we didn't have to do that, but we just felt like with the two services, the D-Star repeater could probably benefit with the uh, maybe 30, 30, 40 feet of, of extra height compared to the APRS. It, it's nice having the APRS. I know a lot of folks like to uh, to use that and play around with that. So we're just looking at this, uh, this refurbished <laughs> uh, D-Star unit that uh, KK4KTV, uh, Brian, uh, one of our members, uh, as we call him, Thing2, uh, he knows a guy, and it's always good to have members who know a guy <laughs> for, uh, for additional skills and capabilities. Even if your club has a good amount of skills and capabilities, it never hurts to, uh, to even bring in some outside help now and then. And he helped get this unit built for us uh, with some other local hams uh, and is a big proponent of D-Star. And in our part of, of south-central Kentucky, as we said, it, it's, uh, it, it's probably the most popular digital uh, form out there. Um, more northern central where I live, uh, DMR is probably uh, the, 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 the most popular. Uh, we've got a little bit of, of everything going on around Kentucky, like most places do. Uh, one of our future projects, we're hoping to create a inter-digital uh, <laughs> uh, uh, hotspot, if you will, uh, sort of a, a repeater class hotspot to maybe link almost every kind of digital and analog together. But We'll see if we can bring that together, and we'll certainly bring you folks along if we do. But here we are. We were just reinstalling uh, the D-Star unit and, and doing some further testing, uh, making sure things worked. Uh, Austin had done the testing at his, at his QTH, and everything looked good. But once you've moved equipment around and bumped wires and things, uh, I know those of us in the IT world, you know, you kind of have to recheck things because <laughs> you never know what kind of wire you bumped or connection you bumped or something. But everything was good. Everything looked great. And uh, we put it back in here. Again, we ended up um, uh, moving it a little bit to this other rack you see right here in this screenshot. Um, so we could put it on the antenna that's higher on our tower. And we just felt like D-Star was, was going to be a better use of that particular antenna versus the one that's a little bit lower maybe maybe 30 feet maybe 40 feet lower on the tower still a good a good place for APRS because again we're on a pretty good sized knob it's the biggest hill or knob in that in that area uh, so it's still going to get good coverage for APRS uh, so we put it back in here connected up uh, our power and everything everything tested out um, as you'll see in a minute um, we now have internet at our our location through a microwave connection and that's allowing us to open up some capabilities that we had been wanting to be able to do for, for I, certainly a couple of years, it really more than that, I'm sure. Uh, and so it's really helping us open up some things. Uh, we'll probably be taking a look at uh, System Fusion and uh, probably D, uh, DMR uh, at some point in the future and, and stuff. Because, again, we're, we're in a, a vacation-type area with the lake and, and camping and hunting and fishing and all kinds of stuff. So we get people from all over, and, of course, different people have different interests. So that's one of the reasons we have uh, GMRS as well. Even though it's not uh, complete pure ham, uh, it requires an FCC license, but it's used by a lot of folks. You can get that license, and it covers your entire family uh, for, uh, for 10 years. So uh, we provide as many services as we can. We, uh, we are always looking to get the maximum utilization out of our equipment and help as many folks who are uh, moving to our area or visiting our area as well as ourselves uh, we like to enjoy our equipment and use it as well so we'll wrap this one up this is chris ky4ckp for lake cumberland amateur radio association 73.